Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we're going to build something in Tinkercad. I'm experimenting with OBS to try to do my streams with. I'm going to start off by trying to make some recordings with it. I've spent about seven or eight hours trying to make this work today. <laughs> it's... Uh... <laughs> anyway, I designed this. So this is the lav mic that I got. And the programmable keypad so that I can switch between different displays in OBS software and turn on and off different cameras. So here's the desktop display on and off. So I can do that with this programmable keypad, start, stop recording, etc. The problem I have is I can't wear a lav mic, at least not a wired one. And the reason is that I move around a lot. So I just know I'm going to rip the cord right out of the laptop <laughs> and I don't want to damage my laptop. So the solution is to mount it and this puts it at the right distance because unlike regular microphones, the lav mic has to be close to your mouth. You can't just stick it over there and have it work because it won't pick you up. So it's very distance restricted. So we're going to design that in Tinkercad today. So stay tuned. All right, we should now be recording the desktop screen. And in the corner, you should see the video of me. Um, I found out that I thought control alt and a function key were safe. Um, apparently, control alt function keys are actually used in Firefox. <laughs> control alt F4 closes tabs. Who would have thought? <laughs> so I got to figure out different macro keys that aren't used in other programs. Anyway, this is the device that I came up with. I uh, added this little cup to the top because I discovered that oh, the microphone appears to be a little more directional when I cut my hands around it. So I designed this little cup to hopefully help with that to reduce how much noise comes in from the side. So I designed this in about, I'd say about 30 minutes and then another hour and a half of refining. But that was mostly, you know, print apart, try it, refine it, find something new, try it, refine it, and go from there. So the way I essentially did this was I measured the little keypad, my little programmable keypad, and I made a box in Tinkercad and I added one millimeter to the sides. So if it was 20 by 30, I made the box 21 by 31. And I'm just, I just keep that box. That box is my little cut tool to make sure that opening fits. The microphone itself is about eight millimeters so i made this hole eight and a half millimeters we are actually going to change that to nine millimeters because with this design the i didn't want to put a slot in to slide the wire in so i just feed the plug itself through the hole to feed the microphone through and um turns out the plug is slightly bigger than the microphone body so we're going to make that hole slightly bigger today i'll show you how i did that this slot on the back is the place where the wire goes. So the wire is a little under three millimeters. So I made the hole two and a half millimeters. And because this is in vase mode, it's flexible enough. I just push the wire in the hole and it holds in by friction. So this wire stays nice and neat. And of course on the bottom, you have the other hole right there that allows the USB cable to come out. I used in a half round and I made it tall so that in vase mode it would close the top of that half round effectively and it worked. Now the cool thing is this tower structure I made. Um, I didn't want this big Ophi tower sitting in front of me. I want this nice little elegant skinny tower but I wanted a wide base at the bottom so that would be less likely to tip over and be more stable. And it just looks nice. So the way I came up with that was pretty neat too. I started off with a square and I made the one square slightly bigger than the cut tool I made for that. And you just cut one out of the other and you have now a box that your part will fit in. Let me break this apart and show you. Here we go. Here we have all of our parts. So this box here, all this does is give me a little angled front there. See a little angled front? Just makes it look a little nicer. Looks a little more elegant. Makes the keyboard a little more prominent. So I'm going to hide that for now. All I do is put a box there. I tilt it with your little gauge here. And um, just till it looked nice. The trick was to... Sorry. 
I've been going at, I've been trying to make this video for about 10 hours now. <laughs> the um we're actually going to do it in segments to make sure it actually records it. So the trick is to make sure this doesn't actually cut into this part here. That's pretty easy to do. You just select this and you only select this. Make sure it doesn't cut into it. That's pretty easy to do. You can see it, it actually intersects a little bit there. Not a big deal. If you want to fix that, put the work plane on top of your box. And now you can change the size of the box. Now it doesn't intersect the other one and you're fine. This will allow you to just compress everything all in one. Here is the little slot in the back, the little half round in the back. That creates the path inside for the USB cable. And this creates the path down the neck of the unit for the microphone. This right here is our little hole for the microphone itself. To make this reasonable, I'm going to... You don't want to resize an angled piece because it will skew the part. So what you do is you put the work plane on one of the 90 degree faces of the part and now when you modify the part it'll modify correctly. So I'm going to make this 9 by 9. A little bit bigger. Now of course I just changed the size of it so it's no longer centered. Now I'm going to select that. Well, let me put my work plane back where it belongs. I'm going to select that, hold down the shift key, select the other part. Now they're both selected. I'm going to hit my align tool. And then I'm going to shift and select the part I don't want to move. So the tower, I don't want the tower to move. Now when I do my center, right down here, it's only going to move the part I just changed the size of and not move this part. Because if I move the tower, it's going to change its position relative to all the other pieces that I put into this. To make this piece here, I basically just took a cone, a, um, a nose cone kind of deal, and made it about the right size, so as you can see, it fits in there nicely and to get it to fit onto here I put a work plane on the back of the tower here lopped off the back of the cone put a work plane on the front 90 degrees to the floor lopped off the front of the cone because the cones at an angle now so your cone will be like this it won't be straight so if you take a work plane like this you can cop off that front in fact I can probably take it apart and show you there it goes so there you go so there's the actual cone and I just have a work, uh, a cut box sitting in front of it, and that lops off the front of the cone. So it makes it look nice when you're sitting here looking at it. It also makes it more printable because you don't have as big of an overhang. Now, to get the inside hollow, I duplicated the cone, shrank it, and then used it to cut a hole out of the larger cone. This part here was interesting. So what I did for this was I put a box down here of about this width. This is because this is a pretty nasty overhang. So this will allow the printer to um, gradually fill out until it fills this volume out and it prints perfectly, no support. So to make it the right shape, it's embedded into this, which is fine. It's also embedded into this, which is not so fine because it sticks out inside here. So what I do is I select this object without the cut hole in the middle of it. So as a solid piece, you know, before I put the center in, and then I duplicate it, turn it into a hole, and use it to cut the red piece. And now the red piece perfectly mates up with this piece. To make sure I don't have any micro gaps in there, I then grabbed this piece and moved it up, you know, 0.05 millimeter. Just so that the two parts were actually embedded into each other, and you don't end up with a little micro gap there that the slicer is going to treat as two separate parts. And that is it. Now, how did I get this tower? Well, this tower was interesting. I'm going to take it apart and show it to you. There you go. That's how I made the tower. Now, I am going to put this back together, and I'm going to actually recreate the tower for you and show you how I did that, because it's pretty cool. Turn that to white. Let's move that aside. What I did is you have an object in here called paraboloid. So I created a paraboloid, and then I started just adjusting it until I liked the shape. Thickness, height, you know, that looks about right. Maybe a little thicker. I do know it was 250 or 225 tall. So something like that. Eh, not wide enough. There, that's looking pretty good. Okay, so there's your base tower, your basic structure. Now how do I make that more interesting looking? 
I literally just took this and hit Control D, which duplicated that part. Then I rotated it 180 degrees. Okay, I changed it to a different color, and then I used the Shift key so that it would stay on plane with the other part. Use this um, cone here to drag it up so I get it right where I want it. Then I Control D this again, Shift and Hold to keep it on plane and duplicate it and that gets me my little gap in between here now I highlight both the green pieces join them together into one this allows me to manipulate them as a pair I'm going to temporarily turn it into a hole so I can see how it interacts with these two parts I can change the height I can change the width until I get the kind of shape that I like I can interact with these pieces individually using the shift key when I want to slide it sideways and just keep altering these shapes until I get the shape I the the type of shape I want um, if I don't like the way that is piecing together I can lift this up higher separate these pieces again bring them closer together rejoin them turn it back into a hole and you can see I can just keep altering the shape until I get what I like Now to align them, since these are together, I can do that. So I can center them here. And it looks like they are centered that way. And just keep tweaking these shapes until you get the shape you like. And then you cut one out of the other. Looks like we need to make this wider. We're going to make that one wider, and we're going to make that one wider. There we go. We're starting to get a bit of a cut here. And just keep adjusting it until you get what you like. And when you get a shape you like, I think I even rotated these. So let's try that. Separate again. What I'm going to do, I think it was 7 degrees actually. I think I rotate them 7. And grab this one. Rotate it. Negative 7. There we go. Now we're getting more of what I want. Turn them back into a hole. There we go. Now it's starting to look more like it. Cut a deeper notch out of there. Maybe make that tower a little skinnier. So I'm going to bring these together a little more. Using the shift key again to keep it on plane. Join them together again. Let's do a realignment. Make sure we're actually all lined up. They are. And now we just keep adjusting our shape until we get what we like. Yeah, I like that. Now I'm going to realign them again. There. Now we're starting to get... That tower shape that we want and tweak it and adjust it and when you finally get the shape you want join them together and there you go you create yourself a nice little tower and you can tweak and adjust that until you get what you want to you get the shape that you want one of the things that I had to do was to make sure that the apex the, the point of these parts here was not inside the tower because if they're inside the tower you're going to have a, a spot there that you can't print see i want to bring that out widen it a little bit bring it out more okay and just keep adjusting that until i get the shape that i like let's get rid of this one we're going to reduplicate this one Control D, and we're going to hit the mirror tool here. And that's going to mirror it right over here. There we go. Join those together again. Okay, realign them. You just keep playing with the shapes until you get what you want. Make those a little wider. Realign them again. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're starting to look like the tower. Cut it, and there you go. We have an almost identical tower that we just made. And that's how you make these weird little complex shapes in Tinkercad. So if you want to experiment, that's how you do it. My first print, the box fit. You do, the trick is to build in tolerances.
if you try to make the cutout the exact size it's not gonna fit <laughs> um, you got to add a little bit of tolerance I usually add about a millimeter in all dimensions unless the part requires more precision like a rocket part but then you're gonna have to test fit test fit test fit I must have adjusted the dimensions on this part here to fit into this part here I must have um, tweaked that 30 or 40 times and made 20 little test prints before I finally got that to fit just right because it's a complex curve shape but on something like this where it's just a square it's not so hard that's it if you have any questions about using Tinkercad um, feel free to ask me down below if you decide you want to get this keypad and this lav mic because <laughs> it is specific to these parts I will post this to Thingiverse and you can print one out if you want it's pretty cool that's it. You guys have a great day. I will see you later.